salam ala rasulillah. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, distinguished guests, community leaders, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, being here with us this evening. I was given a uh, title that uh, at first confused me. The threat of extremist separatism and patriot patriotism. And uh, when I reflected on it, I remembered the verse from the Holy Quran where Allah says, Had Allah willed, He would have made humanity one nation. One community or one nation. Of course, if He had done that, this would have been a type of compulsion that would have left no place in society for those who prey on separatism or prey on patriotism. They would have to find something a little more useful to do for their daily bread. When I look at different animal species, I see that there are so many species that treat each other with equality regardless of their colour. They don't look at the ancestry or the race. I see cats of different colours playing together. I see dogs of different colours. I see sheep. I see so many different animals of different colours behaving civilly with each other, having friendships, mating, with no care about these insignificant differences. But when we turn to the human species, we see that there are some who look at the basest elements of human nature. We see some, and we have seen throughout history, some dividing society on colour. And today we see elements within Australian society attempting to divide us on race or divide us on religion. And we see so many hapless lawmakers not knowing to which group they should pander, lest they lose some crucial votes. Extremist separatism and extremist patriotism are very similar. Both of them divide society into them and us. One seeks to claim certain missing individual rights, and one seeks to keep minorities downtrodden and incites fear of these minorities. Speaking against false patriotism, the great British writer Samuel Johnson said, Patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. He said, A man sometimes starts up as a patriot only by disseminating discontent and propagating reports of secret influence, of dangerous counsels, of violated rights, and encroaching usurpation. It could be described as being what's being said about Muslims in Australia. This practice is no certain note of patriotism. To instigate the populace with rage beyond the provocation is to suspend public happiness, if not to destroy it. He is no lover of his country that unnecessarily disturbs its peace. Few errors and few faults of government can justify an appeal to the rabble, who ought not to judge of what they cannot understand and whose opinions are not propagated by reason, but caused by contagion. Former Prime Minister Paul Keating made a distinction between nationalism and patriotism when he described John Howard, a former Prime Minister as well, as a nationalist and not a patriot. He said, nationalism's stock in trade was jingoism, populism and inclusion of the most calculating kind. And we have Einstein speaking in a war context. And before I use his quote, I wonder what he would say about society today. He said, He who joyfully marches to music rank and file has already earned my contempt. He has been given a large brain by mistake, since for him the spinal cord would surely suffice. This disgrace to civilization should be done away with at once. Heroism at command, senseless brutality, deplorable love of country, and all the loathsome nonsense that goes by the name of patriotism. 
He said, how violently I hate all this. How despicable and ignoble war is. I would rather be torn to shreds than be part of so base an action. It is my conviction that killing under the cloak of war is nothing but an act of murder. And in another quote from the same man, he says, nationalism is an infantile thing. It is the measles of mankind. Before I go back to the Quran for another quote, uh, the philosopher Schopenhauer had this beautiful summary. He said, every miserable fool who has nothing at all of which he can be proud adopts as a last resource pride in the nation to which he belongs. He is ready and happy to defend all its faults and follies, tooth and nail, thus reimbursing himself of his own inferiority. You can see in some of these quotes, nationalism and patriotism may be conflated, and they can be conflatable. Though this rallying around national identity has rarely taken humanity forward. It has been the fuel of divisiveness. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, addressing humanity at large. This is a verse that is not addressing the Muslims or the believers, addressing all people. He says, O people, we indeed did create you from a male and a female, and made you into peoples and tribes, so that you might get to know one another. The most noble amongst you with God is the most God conscious. God made a distinction in this verse. He said, peoples and tribes. Maybe drawing your attention to what we do as a people, what it means to be people and what it means to be tribes. Sometimes this small distinction can be just like the distinction between nationalism or patriotism. Or it could, can be as vast as the difference between racism and social harmony. One, is, one can be inclusive and the other can be insular. People equals humanity. We are all people regardless of our colour, regardless of where we come from, regardless of our religion. And tribes can equal tribalism. Distinctions that can quite often be meaningless. Like the distinctions between the positive aspects of human nature and the negative aspects and the ability of humanity to transform a positive into a negative and the reverse. A nation can be uniting when we allow the common good to unite us. And they can face disaster. A nation can face disaster. It starts to consume itself from inside when political aspirants find currency rather than condemnation when they use diversity to divide the citizenry. You don't need a foreign enemy to bring you down if you have your own elected leaders or sections of your media sowing the seeds of division amongst the citizenry. They will be bringing down their own nation, unfortunately. Xenophobic rhetoric is sedition of the ugliest kind and is a damning indictment on those who engage in it. This does not mean that there is no room for criticism of negative forms of behaviour. There is. But such criticism should be in the form of constructive introspection rather than demonization and marginalization and blame shifting. We can be positively united by a fair rule of law and a common good that is enriched by our diversity and impoverished without it. What is your ultimate desired outcome? What is your ultimate objective? Will you keep going until you find people without any difference that irritates you? Or will you look at these differences as a source of enrichment, a source of different perspectives, and this diversity as something that contributes to our betterment as a human race? Thank you.